But I think you're supposed to get the text and then make the sermon off the text. Amen. But, you know, there's different ways of doing things, and sometimes I don't feel too inspired. But uh, this morning I want you to turn to, in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, I don't want to get myself in too much trouble, but... I don't really worry about it too much either. We did have that question asked last week about what wokeism is. And so like I said, I've got this sermon here and he, he pretty well lays it out for you. Our president got, gets up, you know, and, and he said there's a battle for the soul of our nation. And there is. And he's on one side. Right. And I think he's on the woke side. That's right. He's on the wrong side. And the conservative people are on the other side. Amen. And the Bible here teaches there's a battle. Of course, the battle started back in the Garden of Eden. Well, Amen. as a matter of fact, it started before that. You want to talk about a long war? Uh huh. They talk about the hundred year war. Well, about the thousands of years that this battle's been going on. And we really don't even know, but personally, I don't believe the world's billions of years old. I don't either. I'm more of a new, new earth person. Amen. I think the flood's the answer for a lot of the seashells up on tops of mountains and right. not a lot of the. And uh, they talk about the layers of the earth, and I don't want to get into all that, but some of the layers aren't in the same order. That's right. That's and right. they, they, they try to prove dates by all that stuff, and they cannot prove how old the universe of this world is. But I go by, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So I'll just go with that. Because he was an eyewitness. They're guessing. That's right. Best yeah. on their base science based on their best scientific research. But I thought for it to be scientific you had to observe it. Amen. Now how did they observe something that went around to see? But God was. And the angels were. They didn't go all the way back, the angels, but they went back farther than man. Angels were created before the men. That's right. And Satan fell. But here, and we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to try not to be super long, but sometimes I get into stuff and it's hard to get stopped. And uh, even when I'm studying and but let's see what verses do I want to start out in here. Well, let's go to verse 10. 610, Ephesians 610. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You know, I don't know what you think, but I think it's about time Christians stood up and took a stand for what they believe. Yep. Instead of taking the back seat and letting the liberals try to force everything on us. We still have, so far, freedom of religion and freedom of speech in America. But if they destroy our Constitution, we will probably lose all that. And that's what some people are working on doing. Then it might be illegal for you to come to church. What are you going to do then? Right. Well, you know what would probably happen? More people will probably go to church then than go now. Because, you know, we're kind of that way. Tell us we can't do something, we're going to do it. Right. <laughs> but if we can do it, you know, freely now, especially in America, but you know, in some places in the world, that's not so. But I don't want America to become like the other places in the world. God made America the way America is and for a purpose, and I believe... God had a plan for us. He has a plan for Israel. And I don't know every detail of all that. 
But he says, finally, my brethren. I think he's talking to Christians there. Brethren, are you brethren? Brothers and sisters in the Lord? Amen. If you're saved, you're part of the family of God. And in the power of His might. I don't have any power, but God's got plenty. Isn't that right? I'm not dependent on my power. But I need God to help me to stand up and take a stand on things. Amen. And uh, Jesus said when He went back to heaven, He's going to send the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was going to come and bring things to our remembrance. Amen. And so then we can stand up and tell them what God wants us to tell them through the power of God. Verse 11, right. put on the whole armor of God. And then we'll go down through to list all the parts. I think the armor of God's Jesus. <clears throat> you put on Christ when you get saved. And all these parts, I think. But not only did I get Christ when I got saved, I got the Holy Spirit, didn't I? Now, Christ came down here and lived for a while, then He went back to heaven and He sent the Holy Spirit. So we have, we put on God in a sense. I believe you can say it that way. Right. Put on the whole armor of God that we, ye may be able to stand against the wiles of who? No. You know, the devil didn't want you to, it just assumed people didn't think about him. Matter of fact, I think he's trying to aggravate me this morning. And if you start telling people about the devil, and he's just as real as God is. That's right. I'm thinking he's real. A fellow named uh, Bellington over in Akron, Ohio, he used to have a church. He's died now, but he runs 7,000 on Sunday mornings at an independent Baptist church, Akron Baptist Temple. But, uh, it, it, you know, he... Uh, I don't even remember what I was going to say about him. Isn't that awful? Well, I guess I wasn't supposed to say it. Verse uh, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against uh, pri uh, principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness, uh, this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. There it is. I don't know. I, I think uh, in America now we've got some spiritual wickedness in some high places. Yep. Amen. It's kind of hard when our leaders are being wicked, going against the laws. Mm -hmm. And then the people down here see it. Well, I guess they go like that. One time I saw, I heard this place, somebody say, well, you know, you're not breaking the law unless you get caught. No, you broke the law. <laughs> God knows you broke the law. Amen. You can run that stop sign. Nobody, no policeman might not get you, but God knows it. That's right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, you're still breaking law. Did God give us any law? What's the first and great commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all of my heart, all my soul, all my mind. And, and the second is to love your neighbors yourself. Now I think we're getting a breakdown on that thing. First place, most people don't love God. Right. Second place, they don't love their neighbor. Maybe if more of them would get to loving God, they'd start loving their neighbors more. Amen. Is there a battle going on for the soul of our country? Yes. And in this woke stuff, all they want to talk about is racism, sexism. There's a big mess with that. Yeah. Men competing against women. Claiming they're the other sex. Right. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of things. But if we keep losing, if we lose our freedom of speech, and I get up and say that, they might put me in jail. It's more that way in Canada right now. Yep. Right. I think Michigan maybe passed a law like that. And plus, even in our universities, you could get fired because you use the wrong, wrong, whether it's a he or she or him or oh, yeah. the personal pronoun. Or it or yeah, but they are what God made them, whether the people like that or not. Amen. And we got some messes going on over a lot of this stuff. 
And so in verse 24, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You think there's a higher power behind all this? Well, he lists some of it here. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, there's... I, let's, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in, in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I think there's angels and demons involved in the battle. But I also think there are high-ranking people. I imagine uh, if I... Uh, our president get up and say he's the most powerful man in the world. Putin probably say, no, I am. Right. Or that Chinese guy say, no, I am. The most powerful man that ever lived in this world was Jesus. Amen. He never and he's coming back. <laughs> and when he comes back, they'll find out who's the most powerful man. Amen. Only he won't just be a man, he's the God man. He's going to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lords. I think that put him up over all those people that think they're so powerful. And one day all those powerful people are going to stand before him and he's going to judge them. But us lower people down here are going to be judged too. Don't forget that now. Huh? That's right. Don't forget that part. There's a judgment coming. And... A, it won't matter what party you are. <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and I think the judge will do the right thing. Amen. Okay, verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Are you trying to take a stand? Well, how do you know what to stand on? Well, I stand on the promises. Amen. Now, I don't sit on the premises. <laughs> Too many Christians sitting on the premises and not standing on the promises. There it is. I, I've been promised I go to heaven. I've been promised I'll be rewarded if I live for God after I get saved. Amen. I've been promised a mansion. You know? Lord's going to prepare and be a place. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth and having all the on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, we got to protect our heart. Amen. We need to try to protect the truth. Of course, the truth is Jesus or God and beginning of wisdom is knowledge about God. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know how they attack our police officers. A lot of them getting killed. And I'm sure some of them are Christians. And I always like, instead of calling them police, I, I, I think they're peace officers. Most of them. That's why they take that job. They protect you. But a lot of the poor people in the inner cities need more protection than you do. Well, let's defund them. Uh huh? How's it working? Uh -huh. Dr. Feld always say that. How's that working? Let's get some uh, plea bargains going and uh, uh, we can bail them out the same day they commit some crime, and, and, and if they just steal a little bit, we, we don't need to do anything about it. Is that going on? Yes. Is that right? No. I don't believe that's the right thing. Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not uh, bear false. You know, you go through the Ten Commandments, take care of most of all that, wouldn't it? Amen. wonder who gave us the Ten Commandments. He says, uh, above all, taking the shield of faith. You got to start out by believing something. You need faith above all. Well, that's where it starts, really. You got to put your faith in Jesus. Amen. I'm not putting my faith in the government. Not, I didn't put my faith in Coca-Cola either. 
although they paid me a check for over 40 years. And they even give me a little check every month now. It's pretty small though. But I'm thankful for that. I'd well, be thankful for what God helps us to get. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Is the devil throwing shooting fiery darts at us? He ever try to attack you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. He cannot do anything God doesn't allow him to do. That's right. He's just working for God. God's even in control of the devil. Well, you say, well, I, I don't know about that. Go back and look at the book of Job. Told him, says, you can touch everything he's got, but you can't kill him. He limited him. <coughs> and God still has limits on the devil. If he didn't, I, I, you think it's bad now, or you think it's going to get like during the tribulation. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what inflation will be like during the tribulation. Yeah, I do, because I can read over in Revelation. You work all day for uh, to get enough to eat one day. And if you're poor, you eat poor food. But if you're rich, you'll have plenty. The well-to-do, the wicked people. It'll get to the point where Christians or people who believe in God won't even be able to buy food or... That's right. That's all in the, the Bible. It's all there. I'm not making it up. And somebody says, well, have you got anything else to say? Well, I like James 4, 7, and 8. It says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw a nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. People need to make up their mind are they going to live for God or the devil? Well, I'm not living for the devil. No, I'm living for myself. Same thing. Uh -huh. And now what most people would tell you in America today, just so everything's all right with me, that's all that matters. But we're having a little problem. When you go to the grocery store and you, from week to week, every week, the prices go up it is ridiculous the prices they're charging on some things I think they were making a profit before now they're making a super profit and I don't know that that'll go down I but the uh, but the Lord was going to get us through it that's what I believe Carol and I are getting by all right I I never did ever expect to be rich. Uh, then it says if you're rich, you ought to be, think about it, you need to be brought down. If you're poor, you might need to be brought up. But you don't put one above the other. You can get to all that in the book of James if you want to study that little book. And then another place I thought would be good to go would be First Peter. First Peter. I didn't have it. That one marked. First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five. And I want to go down to verses uh, six through nine. First Peter chapter five verse six. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. You know, I don't know that there's a whole lot of humble people in the world today. Huh? Not so Always trying to impress somebody. You know, you got to wear clothes with certain symbols on them. And that right? That little check mark's pretty important. <laughs> now, I think it looks like an H, but it's under armor. Why, why are you running around bragging about your underwear? That's a good one. Well, is that right or not? You know what that symbol is? Under armor? Oh well, humble yourselves. <laughs> the, 
Well, Carol went to look at shoes the other day. It was a, of course, I think uh, we went to that, what, what's that place called? Warehouse? And they said it's discounted, but boy, it didn't look too discounted to me. And then, where do we go after that? And Oh, pennies. Shoes were a whole lot cheaper pennies than at the discount warehouse place. Carol's having trouble finding dress shoes. Because she wants to go to church. Maybe you don't need to go to church. Some people don't think they do. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may, that He may exalt you in due time. Amen. Well, how do you get exalted by God? Well, you be willing to humble yourself. But if you don't humble yourself, you can't even get saved. Well, you have to admit you're a sinner. That's right. Some people don't That's want to do right. that. Then in verse uh, 7, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Is that an important verse? Does God care about you? Amen. Now I want to know, do you think that the devil cares about you? Not a lick. Now I'm going to go another one. Do you think the liberal politicians that care about you? Yeah. But I'm going to throw this one out too. What about the conservative politicians? Yeah. They sure do a lot of talking, but they don't do much doing. And you're paying them a hundred and seventy some thousand dollars a year. How many of you make a hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars a year? Okay. Not only do they do that, they also got perks. Right. Tax perks. So. Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Who really cares about us? God. But these politicians and these people in high positions, they'll tell you anything. To, be, to, to get them their position and keep it. And keep it. I really believe it would be good if America had more than two parties. And besides that, I think it would be good if they had term limits. Not just on the president. Amen. Age limits, too. Preacher. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> Casting all your care, because I know what you're talking about. But I don't know what Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil. Devil's your adversary. And the devil's getting in there and working on people. And he's working on some of the highest up people. And they want to change America. They want to tear America down and rebuild it the way they want it. And if they do, you're not going to have America. I doubt that if, if they get all that done, I doubt if people are going to be beating down the border trying to get in. Yeah. I'll say, oops. It amazes me, and you can, you, maybe I shouldn't say some of this. These big businesses go overseas, produce stuff. We hardly make anything in America anymore. We're dependent on China. Not everything you've got has China written on it. And our high ups, apparently, for some reason, China seems to have some power over them. I don't understand it. But these uh, real rich people, or business people, they go over there and they produce stuff because it's cheap labor. Then they bring it back in here. I think we need to put a tariff on stuff you can go over there and make it if you want, but you're going to pay a price to bring it back in. Maybe that'll bring some businesses back to America and we can get drugs and medicines without depending on our enemy. Nice. And they are our enemy. They are. Oh no, they're just a rising power. Well, they've stole a lot of the technology from us. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom, whom resists steadfastly in the faith. Christians ought to realize who's behind all this mess. Amen. Another thing, I think one of the reasons God has blessed America is we've stood on the side of Israel. Genesis teaches 
If you don't, you're going to have some problems from God. But we need to stay on the side of Israel. One of the congresswomen come out this week and said that Israel's a racist nation. I don't believe that. Matter of fact, I think that Israel gives the people quite a bit of freedom. But some, some of these people, that's all they can talk about is race, sexism. You read this sermon on wokeism and you'll... He's even got a list of things. I thought I could go down through the list, but I'll let you read. That way you can do it at your leisure, and you can even mark it. Amen. And you see if you agree. Maybe next week we'll take a vote. <laughs> may not understand even a about it. It's real simple. Amen. You'll figure it out. Whom resist steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same uh, afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Are they persecuting Christians, burning churches in other countries, murdering them? If America becomes like them, they're going to be doing it here. Yeah. Well, Israel wanted a king. God said, you don't need a king. You've got sure. me. America wanted a king. We don't need a king. We need you to get back to God. Amen. He's the king of kings and Lord of lords. And somebody says, well, he's not yet. Well, I don't know. When he was on the earth, they put across the top of his cross the king of the Jews. Amen. I don't think he's just going to be king of the Jews. I think it would be king of the universe. That's right. Is America part of the universe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't even got into my sermon. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm in trouble already. <laughs> he says in verse 9, whom resist steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren. Our brethren in all parts of the world? Where communism takes them? What's it like in a communist country? How'd you like to live in Cuba? No well, how about Russia? China? Some of the Arabic countries. But what's going on with our brethren in the world? And it's coming here. And you won't stop it. You can maybe slow it up a little. And that's about it. Because it's going to come. But I like to slow it up. Because the more we slow it up, the more people will be getting saved. That's one of the ways you slow it up is to go out here and tell everybody about Jesus and hope they get saved. And if they get saved, maybe they'll come to themselves. But sometimes it amazes me how worldly Christians are. And I've been looking at a, thinking about a sermon about that. Verse 10, But the God of all grace who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Will He have glory and dominion forever and ever? Amen. Once He comes and sets up His kingdom, I, 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 you can have all the nuclear power you want. He could split atoms before man ever knew what an atom was. That's right. He made that. Of course, there's a guy named Adam in Genesis. <laughs> That's good. Huh? At the beginning. Yep. And everything's made up of atoms. I think that's the way it is. I'm not very scientific. You know. <laughs> I, just, I just went through uh, high school. Well, I did take zoology in college. Now I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 13. And there's so much here I'll never get it covered. But we'll start. If I go too long, it gets to quarter to 12, I'm going to quit. So I probably won't get much cover. 
But in Revelation chapter two, 13, you see two beasts come up. One comes up out of the sea. Another one comes up out of the earth. And somebody says, when's all this happening? I think during the tribulation. And so in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, And I stood, now John's standing and seeing this, I believe, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a great, uh, saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, usually crowns are leaders governments and uh, so uh, this beast he's seeing it and verse 2 and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority now there's several things in that verse uh, some of these animals here if you go back to the book of Daniel he uses them to describe different nations that rule the world at different times and so in that from the second verse there it says but uh, the beast which I saw was like a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and a dragon uh, and the dragon gave him power who's the dragon it's the devil Several places in the Bible refers to the devil uh, as a dragon. And his seed and gray and gave. Who gives uh, this beast its power? Satan. The devil. Who's the beast? It's the Antichrist. That's right. Where's the Antichrist going to get his power? Satan. Will he be high up, the Antichrist? Will he be the most powerful man in the world for about. Three and a half years. Then a more powerful man will come and put him down. Isn't that right? Yep. And then he'll give it back to the Father. Somebody says, Where do you get all that? Well, I can get it out of the Bible, but it'll take a while to turn you to all that. So we'll go on. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now, there's where they get the idea the Antichrist will get wounded in the head. When Kennedy got killed, a lot of people claimed it was Kennedy. Yeah. That, you know, he was shot in the head. But Kennedy didn't come back. <laughs> the Antichrist, I don't think, I think it's going to be a fake deal here. <coughs> you know. But that's where they get some of these ideas. Now, you can get all your commentary, study all that out, let me know the way it really is. <laughs> now, I'm not going to loan you my commentary, though. Because then you know what I know. Right? Got some good ones. Get, you, get, you, so get, your, get your own. And, and they worship the dragon. Now, they worship the devil. But the devil uses the Antichrist as the front man. These politicians have front people. Yeah. They're working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Who's the real power? The devil is. Who's the real power today in a lot of this stuff going on? I believe the devil's behind it. That's so what I believe. You can believe what you want. Read your Bible. Ask God to show you. Best thing I can tell you to do. But anyway, they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Uh, so devil gives power to the Antichrist, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? During that three and a half years, the Antichrist is going to have enough power nobody can really stand up to him. Some will try. But he says, Who's able? Well, I know who's able. His Amen. name is Jesus. And he's going to, in the end, come back and take care of the situation. And all this mess that's going on now, I just keep looking for Jesus. Are you looking for Jesus? Isn't that your hope? Yes. Somebody says, well, I don't know. I'm young. I want to live a while. And I used to feel that way, but I'm 77 now. So. 
I'm ready to go. Somebody says, when you going? Whenever the Lord says so. And he'll have me ready. I don't know when or how. But I'll say this, I'm in God's hands. Christian, you're in God's hands. Isn't that important to know that? Do you think he'll take better care of you than the devil? Yes. Hmm. Uh, the Antichrist or the false prophet. We're going to get to him if we get far enough. I'm running out of time. I'm down to 10 minutes. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Will the Antichrist blaspheme God? Will he be a great speaker? Yes. He'll be able to control people like that. Yes. And power was given unto him to continue. How long? 42 months the last that's what we call the great tribulation a tribulation period's a whole seven years uh -huh. but the great starts in the middle uh -huh. when the antichrist sets himself up uh -huh. says there's my image worship it or else uh -huh. if you go back to the book of daniel did that fellow set up an image uh -huh. say bow down or i'm gonna throw you in the fire and he did throw some of them in the fire some will probably get will get thrown in the fire, or then really actually what they'll get their head chopped off. It doesn't really matter which way it is, but they'll pay if they follow the Lord and uh, resist. But in the end, they'll end up better off. Verse six, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme His name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He's going to set up an image in the tabernacle and he's going to tell them worship. Right. And the Jews sure aren't going to do it. No, sir. And Christians shouldn't do it either. Well, other right. people other than Saints. the Jews. Yeah. I'll just say other than the Jews. <clears throat> Verse 7, And was given unto him to make war with the saints, the saints are the people that are following God. Isn't that right? And to overcome them, and the power was given to Him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Is He going to have a lot of power? You think maybe He could claim to be the most powerful man in the world for a little while? For a little while. Verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him. They'll either worship him or he's going to kill them unless they can hide out in the void. And then we could get into a lot of that with the judgment of the nations and, Amen. and uh, the ones that protect them and help them and probably give them food, especially the Jews. And of course, there's going to be some witnesses. They're sealed and they're protected. There's going to be two prophets and they're going to be able to call down fire, but they're finally going to kill them. But then after a while, they're going to stand up and then the whole world's going to see it. And then they're going to go up. But uh, some think that's when the rapture takes place. I read that. I don't believe it, but if they want to believe that, they can. And all... And God'll straighten them out one of these days. Then they'll know who's right, right? <laughs> well, God's right, not me. Amen. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him whose name was not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Is your book written? Your name written into the book? Got yeah, written in there when you were saved. Some say no, it was written in there from the beginning. And if you don't get saved, it'll be marked out. You can believe it either way you want. I don't really care. But if you're saved, it's going to, your name's in the book. You're safe. And this, the, 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 the book here, names are not written in the book of life. If they're not written, they're not safe. But if, it, if you are written, you'll be safe. Verse 9, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Well, that ties back in with what man was going on about this morning. Some people hear, but they don't hear. Some people hear and they hear. Right. Very interesting. And those churches in Revelation, 
the seven churches. If you have ears to hear, hear. If you have ears to hear, let them hear it. And some do and some don't. Hopefully everybody here's heard it. Amen. And your name's written in the book. Or will be when the time comes, depending on which way you want to believe about that. I think it's put in there myself <laughs> when you get saved. But others go the other way or back and forth. Sometimes I have to go back and forth. And he that leadeth, uh, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth uh, with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the pa uh, patience and the faith of the saints. Will there be a lot of followers of God killed? Yes, sir. It says so right there. Verse 11. And I uh, beheld another beast. Now, we've got the Antichrist. Now, who's this next beast? <clears throat> and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Okay, he's got two horns like a lamb. Was Jesus the Lamb of God? Yeah. That taketh away the sin of the world? This is a fake one. Yeah. That's right. And he has the two horns. But look, look at the rest of that verse. And, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a... Dragon. Who's telling him what to say? Yeah. Who writes his speeches? Well, you know, you have a speech writer, right? It's the devil. Wonder who's writing some of these speeches for people today. Well, you have different men, but I think the devil is behind some of that. Yeah. Verse 12, and he exercised all the power of the first beast. Now, this false witness gets power from the first beast, but they both get their power actually from, so you got a satanic trinity here. Right. Yeah. Just like you have a holy... The devil's always copying God trying to fool people. Right. Yep. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell thereon, uh, therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the false prophet's trying to get, make them worship the Antichrist. Not Christ, the Antichrist. Is that what you get out of that verse? That's what I get out of it. Yes, sir. Verse thirteen, he, and he doth, and he doth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven out of the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth uh, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight, uh, in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. The Antichrist resurrected. He died and he did live. Was he copying Jesus? And the false prophets trying to get people to believe all this stuff. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. A beast that can... An image that can talk? Huh, what are they talking about now? AI, TV. artificial intelligence. Yeah, it's all in place. Is it? Can it all come together? Yes, it can. When the Bible was written, could it? Oh. Well, how did God know all that ahead of time? Because He sees the future. Because He's God. Amen. He knows everything. And He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause. Uh, cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You have a choice. You're putting your life on the line if you believe in God. Are we headed in that direction? Even in America, possibly? Well, they, some Christians go stand outside these abortion clinics protesting it. They get killed, they get away with it. But if it was the other way around, what would happen? They'd throw them right in jail. Right. Probably execute them. Verse 16, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand 
are in their foreheads. Well, now we talk about a chip. I don't know, but it would be possible. In our day, would that be possible? Mm -hmm. And that and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number number of his name. Okay, now. Can't buy or sell. I don't think he could get anything to eat. But some people will help the Jews and the people that do believe in God. And they'll get rewarded for that. Uh, they had to have the mark. I don't think it'd be a good idea to take the mark, do you? Or the number. Now, uh, wouldn't be hard to number all the people in the world now, would it? Keep track of them. They already do. They already have your number. They already know more about you than you know about yourself. Even in America. I didn't stutter when I said that. China's even worse. And here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six, is six hundred three score and six. It's six six six. Somebody says, "Well, will that actually be that number six six six? Well, I don't know, and uh, I don't think anybody else knows except God. Uh, but I'll say this: a fellow named Clark wrote a commentary years ago. And he said it could be an 18-digit number. Another thing, they really, you don't have to necessarily have all this. I think it won't be long, we will not have cash money. Right. It'll just be all computerized. Right. Are we setting up for all this stuff or not? Yes, we are. Have I given you enough here to make you think about some of this. And I could go on, but let's see. Did I get to the end of the chapter? Yeah, I got to the end of that chapter, right? And it's, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. It's right up 12. That means it's time to stop. But we'll get those papers and put them on the back uh, 